to Lucky M Board Goats. So, if you don't know, I am Brandon, and I am dressed like Larry the Cable Guy, and I look like I need a shower. So, it is now 10.30 on Friday, and uh, I am on my way up to Highway 92 in Nebraska, so I can head west to Loop City for Boars on the Loop. Um, as some of you may know, we do have four little kids, and everybody's kind of sick right now. Needless to say, um, mama needs to stay home with the little ones. So I'm, this will be my third show uh, running it solo. Um, I'd be a liar if I say I wasn't stressed out already. Um, so we'll, we'll see how this goes. I don't know how much I'll get filmed. Maybe somebody else can film something for me or maybe I'll set up the tripod. I may look kind of weird doing that, but we'll try it. Anyway, um, I guess just hang out and I've got a slightly less than two and a half hour drive ahead of me. Still driving. Okay guys, so a little update, um, I'm gonna focus here. So, left Ravenna this morning where I was staying, and it is super foggy. I don't know, yeah, you can see. So we're, we're not taking it very fast. Um, not gonna get there as soon as I want, but I didn't film anything last night um, with it just being me at the show right now. Um, it basically took me from the time I got there all night um, I had to wash and, um, you know, check the clips, clip jobs on, on the goats just to make sure if we needed to blend anything out, trim the hooves up, clean their horns up, stuff like that. Um, so that took me most of the night and, uh, in between that and talking to, talking to some people from Oklahoma and Kansas that are stalled next to us. So anyway, um, the best news of the day so far, considering it's, seven o'clock 702 in the morning is that I forgot my jeans so I currently am wearing a polo some cargo shorts and my boots luckily I have tennis shoes with me so you know gonna be the stylish award or win the stylish award for that one maybe they'll give me a I don't know a red ribbon or something like that so anyway we'll get there I'll see if I can get some footage today having seven animals um i'm gonna have to have some help in a couple classes um just to get all the animals through because i can't show two animals at once and luckily this group of people is super helpful uh we're all willing to help each other show an animal if we don't have one in a class or in the next class to where we need to be busy prepping one of ours so um that's always really nice so in this case i've got two young bucks in the same class i've got a couple couple girls that we have to show commercial class um, will be in the same couple things like that so anyway when I get there I'm gonna help Chad from Iowa um, I want to say it's maybe CH or CNH oh I should check um, but anyway I'm gonna help uh, get the hoof boss out and trim some hooves on one of his does because uh, his hoof boss took a poop um, and like I said we'll we'll get ready I believe the show starts at 8.30. So, stay tuned. On the right schedule for their growth, I think there's one a little bit more muscle back into that hind leg. That brings him to the class pretty easily. He really balances up quite well. Really has a lot of muscle over that top line and balances up. We could make him a little bit better on that hip, but being pretty particular about a pretty nice one. The next buck, very similar in type kind, might be a little bit longer neck, but he doesn't quite have that muscle back in that rub compared to the one ahead of him. The one that really matches him really quite well in the, the front two-thirds. 
you know, you really got that rib shape and that balance up in the front two thirds. Very excellent buck to be in second. The third buck, you really love the power that he has, that extra mass. And when you get on the profile with him, he gets a little short sided for me. Just need to link him out a little bit more. But still a very heavy, heavy muscle buck to be in third. The next buck, you love the, the extra frame that he has at that point of the shoulder. He's really tall fronted. We get starts to lose muscle over that top. He's not quite as wide as the three ahead of him, but still one that you can really work with in that frame and bone in the first. The paint buck, you really appreciate the look that he has. Really balances up quite well for a paint buck. You know, he has that extra top and balance. Just needs an extra lot more muscle to move, move up any higher. Then another big frame buck. We just need a few more pounds on him to move him up any higher. Please give him a nice round of applause for bringing him out. Well, everybody, welcome back to Lucky Ann Boar Goats. Um, today is day two of the Boars on the Loop, and it's raining, and that means we have to get all the critters from the barn about 20 yards across into the show ring. So, um, and it's been raining all night. Um, it's wet in the fields here along the highway. Um, so that's gonna be interesting, but it's show three, day two. Most of us are usually kind of burned out already in show um, two of day one. I did not get a single bit of video yesterday. Um, the reason for that is uh, a couple of the little kiddos weren't feeling real well. So Shayna stayed home and then grandma wasn't feeling good. So um, Shayna ended up staying home with the kiddos. And anyway, um, yeah, so I was riding solo, but like a bunch of us has talked. Um, I don't know if this is state dependent, um, but I know for sure here, we've got a lot of people and a lot of people from different areas. And once you introduce yourself and talk, um, everybody's wanting to help each other. You know, where I'm flying solo and I got a bunch of animals, there's a couple classes where I have two animals in the same class. so. We're willing to help show each other's animals for each other. Um, I always recommend if you are the breeder and one of the two is an ornery turd, uh, you better show that one. Let the other person show the easy one. Um, so I want to give a big shout out to Chad um, for helping me out yesterday. He's just got two here with him. He came from Iowa, but uh, he's been a great help. Um, and I had other people, some people from Perry, Oklahoma. I think it's FMV Livestock, uh, if I remember right. Uh, nice group of people, nice family. Uh, they said they'd be willing to help too. So I used one pin, packed everything in it for the night, so it's sitting outside. Here I used an extra panel for the babies. I need to take note that when I bring three does, I need to bring two feeders because ice kind of gets pushed to the side. She gets her fill, but... The boys are looking good. They didn't lose any condition. I think having them here together, having a buddy in the pen has done them well. I uh, took some notes because <laughs> I get a little scatterbrained. When I got home that night, I, I shot this portion of the video, and I was so tired. Um, I was all over the place. So anyway, a couple things I want to say is, again, thank you to FMV Livestock. Um, there was a couple from down by Belleville, Kansas, that it was their first show. I want to say thank you to them for holding some animals for me down by the ring. They are really nice people also. Um, I met a family called, I think it was BX Life's Livestock or Boar Goats. Um, 
Uh, I'd have to look. They're something Springs, um, Kansas. Um, another family from down by Salina and Wichita. Um, some things like that. So I want to say thank you to all of them um, for standing around holding a goat for whatever little short period of time. Um, but what I want to go into is when you go to these shows, um, everything is broken down. Junior, yearling, and senior divisions. It's broken down by percentage, so anything 50% traceable in their paperwork, um, up to full bloods, which I believe is 94% and above. Um, if I'm wrong, correct me on that in the comments, or we'll fix it in the comments, but anyway. Um, and then only full blood bucks. We don't show any percentage bucks in ABGA. Um, so anyway, that being said... In the junior divisions, it's three-month span, 0-3, to 3-6, three, three to 6-9, six, six to 9-12. Nine, nine to when you get in the older uh, yearling groups, it's four months. So 12-16, to 16-20, 20-24 20, 20 months. That's how they're broken down. And then um, same with your bucks. Your, your seniors, I want to say they go bigger gaps. So you might get to a 36-plus months or depending on how many animals are brought, Usually the numbers start to dwindle in the older animals compared to, say, like your three to six and six to nine month classes. And so they'll have a bigger age range. So that's that's a little bit of that. Um, so here's how we did. So when we were in Iowa, we had some pretty good success. Um, every judge has their own style. There is a set of standards in which these animals are supposed to be judged for breed correctness. Each judge, just like anything, has their own interpretation, and their interpretation of what they see that day can change a little bit. Um, some people feel they do better under a certain judge. I can tell you right now, I did completely different with Link under the same judge as we had in Iowa. Um, the very first judge that you see seen a, a minute ago when Chad had Spotted Freak for me in the ring... Um, he didn't like Missing Link this time like he did before. Um, he judged Missing Link as the oldest in the zero to three month group by just a couple days. Um, he had him second place in that yearling division in Iowa. And then we went on to the drive and the, the grand drive or whatever, the big drive. And he took reserve grand overall. So he won his zero to three class. He got second in everybody from zero to to 12 months and then he got second and everybody from zero on up and this one <laughs> didn't even like him out um he he didn't even make the top six cut um so what you have to watch for is that as these young animals grow whether they be bucks or does is they will get growth spurts just like kids we got gangly when we were young then we put on some weight and fill in put on some muscle um depends i'm using a sports reference but um so those things change and so as you saw um the comments on freak need to just put some more meat on him right or some more fill um we wouldn't uh even attempted to take spotted freak two weeks ago um you know it's it's now half a week past the show but probably two and a half weeks ago spotted freak wasn't even on our radar all of a sudden his tall gangliness started to fill in and, and started to fill in pretty well. And he's and they're still working on it. Um, so he is a little bit older than Link. Link just moved into three to six. So you got to keep in mind, Link was really good in zero to three compared to the ones younger than him. But when you can start comparing him to the bigger ones, things change, right? So just keep these things in mind when you show as you age up a group you're going to get outhorsed by some really beefy animals. Um, their, their frames will start opening up more as they put on weight, lots of things. So you've got to keep all that in mind. Every judge judges the standards different, and every weekend they will judge the standards different. Um, so like I said, you got to keep all that in mind. Uh, don't ever take anything for granted. Because um, I know for us, we were hoping just a little bit that Link might pull something out um but he was just just a cloud at the end of the class so uh, that's what you get for aging up anyway so let's go through this so show number one um 
I think Sweetie Pie is her name, right? Macy's little zero to three goat um, out of peaches. So she's um, a 50% doe. Um, I have never worked with her. Um, Shana said she has video. I don't believe it's on her Facebook page. Maybe it's on her personal page or she hasn't posted it. She has video evidence that she leads great on a halter. Um, you know, doesn't really fight at all. I got Sweetie Pie in a uh, Weaver Total Control Halter. Excuse me for that, y'all. And um, she would not walk at all. Um, basically, in that zero to three month class, um, unless you have a lot of time to dedicate to getting them to walk, um, which she doesn't have as much time in her, um, you kind of end up dragging them through the sand, the shavings, the whatever it is. And so she put up a fight with me dragging with her back legs hooked clear under once we got around to the other rail i got ready to set her up and she was just fighting me squatting her butt down wouldn't stand and i didn't find it fair now maybe you can judge me for this i didn't find it fair to the other competitors and animals for her being a distraction in amongst them now we all have an animal that has its moment but um i know how these little animals can be and so I just decided, you know what, I'm not going to put up with her because as the judge was coming, she just would not cooperate a single bit. So she would have been last anyway just due to the way she was acting. So I basically just picked her up. I said, go ahead and scratch us. And I basically scratched her the rest of the weekend. Um, so we lost our entry fee for her in the shows. If the kids wouldn't have been sick or Shana would have been there, maybe it would have changed the outcome of how she would have acted. But with me, I wasn't going to put up with um fighting her you know because we have no relationship so then we're going to move still in the percentage we're going to move up into the yearling the second class in the yearling division the 16 to 20 month um oh i should state sweetie's class zero to three percentage 12 animals in it i want to say that this show not counting the commercial animals or the market animals that showed after show one i heard there was about 190 animals that showed up so a pretty decent sized show um here in a few weeks, we'll head to St. Paul that had 250 last year uh, during the height of the pandemic. So um, we've got some pretty good numbers showing up. So Spitfire's class had 10 in it in the 16 to 20 month percentage. Um, they were doing cuts of about six, top six and five, top five get ribbons. Um, Spitfire, we've got her not quite fed out to her peak potential of her genetic frame and stuff like that. She is just a 50% doe. Um, but she didn't make the top six, and a lot of times they don't place that. They'll just call the top six up into the center and excuse the rest on the ring rail um, because there's no sense in you standing around any longer. Um, some judges will, depending on the extra number, will go through and give a little explanation of why they maybe would like to change something on your animal, but in the, this case, that wasn't happening. So Spitfire didn't make, make the cut, um, and that's fine. She... If you know your animals, you know there's going to be some holes in them, some things you'd like to change um, to make them just the absolute best. And so I can pick every single one of our animals apart, even if they got grand champion. Um, so we move into the full bloods. The second class of junior full bloods was the three to six month full blood class. There were 11 entries there. Um, Twisted Sister, um, she got fourth. Okay, so we brought home a pink ribbon. Um, then we move up into the junior full blood bucks where we had spotted freak and the missing link missing link, um, can be a little ornery. So I showed him and Chad showed spotted freak. This is the clip you guys saw a few minutes ago. Um, freak got sixth, um, and they only placed ribbons to fifth. So he got sixth, he made the cut, um, but he did not get a ribbon. Uh, link did not make the top six cut, um, and so he was somewhere between 7 and 12. Um, they didn't place him. They just excused us. So that's your main main groups. Um, then what they had was we moved into commercial. And so they did do a weigh-in. Uh, weigh um, so depending on if you had kids bringing in their little market does or anything like that, we weighed those out. There were five classes. Um, and I want to say... 
I think there was five junior classes and then anything above a year. And so we were in class two with ice. Um, she was, I want to say around 65 to 67 pounds. And I do, I looked through the text messages. I don't remember exactly where she placed, um, in that show. Um, but she got either second or third. Um, but there were just five does in that second class. Um, and now Belladonna, she came in a little heavier. Um, I have 78 pounds written down, but I'm not so sure it wasn't 87 pounds. There was a pretty good gap between those two girls. I think it was 87 pounds. Um, but Belladonna came in second of three. Um, so she did, um, your second places did go to the drive. Um, so that's kind of where we panned out there. Now, if we moved to show two, which would have been two thirty, three o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. So we'll do this one quicker. Sweetie, zero to three percentage. I, I cut her out of that class. Um, Spitfire, they did place all the goats and she was eighth. So eight out of, out of 10. So she was third from the bottom. Um, like I said, that class, that 16 to 20, there's some big girls in that class they're they're stout um then we moved our full blood twisted sister she got fourth again in the uh, three to six full bloods um spotted freak moved up from sixth he ended up getting fourth and that judge ended up liking link and so link ended up moving up from who knows where in the bottom of the class up to sixth so um freak brought home a, a pink ribbon um then we jumped down to the commercials. Ice got third um, of five, so she went down a place. Um, and the judge said she was a little bit full bloody, uh, or a little, little too full blooded in style, um, which makes sense because she is a full blood. Um, her horn structure is just a little weird um, in the styling, uh, and her pigment is not correct. It's not. It's marginally there for her age. So it was very, we got a chuckle about that after he made that comment. Um, Bella Donna um, in her class, class four, um, one of the entries dropped out in that class. And so she ended up getting first out of those two. Um, so I ended up, she ended up going to the drive again. Um, but then after this, we also had um, like fun classes or special classes, right? So we had things like Peridot's pair of bucks. I, I don't think there was a pair of bucks. If there was, we weren't entered in it. And then we have the Nebraska born and, and raised or born and owned classes. And so we did the pair of does with um, Belladonna and Twisted Sister since they are twins. And we did, I put them in the commercial class because we were not sure if they were going to judge um, on breed standard. And if that was the case, Belladonna's bite is just off a little bit and so we didn't want to get disqualified so I bumped them from the full blood class down to the commercial class and we did win pair of does. so we'll get I believe we get a plaque um, engraved some plaque or something something engraved um, they'll be sending us at a later date and then um, the then we had Nebraska doe class and so everybody brought their does in there had to have been 20 of them in this class um from all the nebraska entries and i so i took twisted sister in uh chad took belladonna in and lord forgive me i think his name's randy um he's actually one of my farmers for my daytime job his son um he helped bring ice in and uh, Ice ended up winning the Nebraska class, which is ironic because um, one of these um, signs back here is actually from Emmy last year. Ice's would have been older sister um, from last year's breeding. She won the same class in St. Paul. So um, clearly there's a little something to her unique styling. Um, so that, that kind of finished out day two or day one, show two. Um, and so that's kind of where we ended there. Um, we moved to show three on Sunday. Um, most of the competitors did stay. Um, you start to lose some of them when you get towards the end of the day. 
things like that, depending on travel distance. But um, I would say they didn't lose a whole lot of people. So Sweetie Pie was still out of zero to three. Um, Spitfire didn't make the cut. Um, Sister moved from day one, having fourth and fourth down to sixth. So a difference in styling preference from that judge. Um, Freak and Link were both cut. So Freak had uh, a sixth and a fourth, and now he didn't even make the cut out of 12. So they were in the bottom six. Um, and then when we moved to the commercial, Ice got first in her class, and Belladonna got first in her class. So they both went to the drive. Again, uh, Chad came over and uh, helped hold one of the goats. And Ice ended up winning Grand Champion Commercial on Sunday, day three. So um, I know this has been <laughs> like a 17-minute wrap-up, um, but I just kind of want to throw that stuff in there for you guys. Um, I'm going to try, hopefully, everybody's health. Um, we're going to uh, try to get some better video. Um, Jason over at Clear Creek, he ran solo this weekend um, in Kentucky. Um, at the, I think it was Kentucky, the Bluegrass class, uh, show and sale down there. Um, he uses GoPro, so go check that out. Um, I know there's others at our show that were running solo with multiple animals. Um, and it's just, you know, either you spread your animals out in classes or um, we get some help from, from some other competitors. So we'll do better. Comes uh, St. Paul, uh, we'll get you some more videos. So we'll see if we can get some more behind the scenes for anybody that doesn't know what goes on at these shows. Um, and like I said, I, I again just want to thank thank all the competitors coming up. Thank Levi for putting on uh, a first show. Um, went went well. Um, you know, I, we all wish we'd do better on the board um, or with more ribbons, but uh, but it went off without really any hitches, I thought, as far as myself. Um, I want to thank all the people from out of state coming up and, and the judges for traveling to come up and judge. So um, it's nice knowing that we here in Nebraska have still got shows going on. We've got the Big Red Buckle Series. You just need to show up and compete in enough events, and it's a special award ceremony to win buckles. Um, and so I think we've still got... St. Paul, Beatrice, um, and Heartland. So we've still got at least three, if not four more shows. Um, it's either a th four or five show series. So we know we're at least going to have those. So anyway, thanks for hanging in there. Another long-winded video with me just filling you in. Um, but like I said, stay tuned because we have another show coming here at the end of June. And we also have a whole bunch of breeding protocol um, and herd hoof cleanup and stuff like that to do. So. Yeah.